Hello everybody, welcome back to the latest episode of Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk. Featuring the cast and crew of the Starfleet Intelligence finest unknown vessel, the USS Nighthawk, exploring the Lesai Expanse. We are going to cut straight into part two of the uh, most recent episode where the Nighthawk has found a crashed Excelsior class vessel on a class N planet. The vessel, known as the USS Veritas, appears to have been carrying on great transwarp experiments in secret and has rammed into a planet full force, leaving very few survivors. Uh, those few survivors have uh, created a habitable environment underneath a, ma underneath a mountain in a series of caves, and the an strange bug species has taken over what remains of the Veritas itself. Uh, currently, the away team is, I be unless they've had uh, another idea in the last couple weeks, I believe the away team was going to go check out the shuttle. And now that the USS Nighthawk is in orbit, they know what the situation is, and we're going to see what's going on here. Uh, so, Commander Bashir. Um, are you I... still planning on heading back to the shuttle, or do you have other ideas? No, nope, that's what we were going to, because we are assuming that the little thing got out, and we were heading to the shuttle to go check it out. Yes, Fair that enough. was the last thing I remember. Okay. <clears throat> so, with the assistance of, uh, I believe his name is Dean Jacobs, one of the... Uh, offspring of this original survivors. Uh, he brings you back to the decontamination airlock uh, where you put on your environmental suits and head out into the radiation soaked uh, vessel. The problem is in the hour or two that you've been away several of the little blind critters have once again appeared in the shuttle bay. Probably investigating what all the original noise was about when the shuttle first came in. Oh, it would help if you guys could see that. Oh, wait, you do. You should, anyways. Ah, oh, I know why. That's, uh... Sorry, just had to do some Roll20 shenanigans so the stream can actually see what the players see. There we go. Okay. Uh, you emerge f nearing the airlock, and it's not hard to hear uh, the skittering of clawed feet over corroded metal. You don't need to stick your head above the uh, uh, hatchway to know that there are bugs out there. Question is, what do you guys wish to do? How money estimating? between us and the shuttle. Are you looking, or are you asking Vaid with the tricorder? Vaid with the tricorder. Okay, uh, this will be an insight medicine test for life science scans. Uh, this will be a difficulty of... a uh, difficulty of one, just be due to the proximity. Also, is there a way to... Uh, I, I guess, I don't know if it comes after this, but scan for potential weak spots. Ah, uh, like on the bug itself? Yes. Ah, well, if you succeed, you can certainly generate, you can spend two momentum to generate an advantage, which would definitely help in this situation. <laughs> All right. And that is two successes, so you get one momentum out of that. Shall we spend two momentum to get those weak spots? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So, um, so you're down to I. So you had maxed out um, momentum from. Well, you had five momentum from last time. Uh, you lost one due to scene change. So, I, if my math is accurate, you should have about. Three momentum left? Four. Four, right. Close enough. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so uh, life signs are telling you that in the chamber itself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, there are currently eight bugs uh, skittering around. Uh, four of them are immediately between you and the shuttle. Uh, what you're finding interesting is there are actually there are no life signs from the shuttle itself. And as for a weakness, um, I will say that they are uh, because they are blind. Uh, they have extremely sensitive hearing, uh, so any sort of loud noises or sonic disruptions near one of them or near nearby is enough to stun them for a round. Ooh, all right. Um, there are about eight bugs, sir. Four of them are between us and the shuttle, and uh, but what I have picked up is that they are blind. But we could, but they're very sensitive to hearing, so we could potentially use that against them. Very good. Can we, Mr. Helsing? Did we bring anything on board? Bring anything with us that could cause a distraction? Not sonic related, sir. Uh, short of taking a tricorder and setting it up with some type of high frequency and then tossing it. Now, you, uh, as a remember, reminder, you did take, uh, you gave me escalation Grenade. to take uh, photon grenades. Uh, true. I so, want to save those. Of course you do. We can always get rid of a tricorder. <clears throat> up to you guys because Sonar and I both have the photon photon grenades and sonic something sonic would move them away it gives us a chance to run in to get to the shuttle are they like um, I guess my question is um, All right, we were just coming to check out this shuttle. Um, if right now... Oh, ow. Yes. Someone's feedbacking terribly. Okay. Um, oh, sorry about that. Try again, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> are we good? <laughs> I think no, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um... Well, I guess I was saying, we want to get back to the ship and try to get a rescue mission going. So, I guess if these people want to leave. Uh, so, sh there's only four between here and the shuttle. So, do you think we can should just make a break for it? Commander? Oh, I think he went. Uh, yeah, he went BRB. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Helsing shrugs and says, "Whatever." That's you... No, we're not going to make a break for. <laughs> Helsing shrugs and says, "Do what you need to do, sir." All right. <laughs> By your leave, sir. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fair enough. Basically, I was going to say, yeah, let's have our security team uh, take point and just make a break for the shuttle. <laughs> so no, no Sonic? Well, there's only, four, there's only four of them currently, and all we need to do is get to the shuttle. So I'd rather not. There, there are eight total, only four in our way. But And as soon as we start to move, the others are going to come start right. coming in when they hear so... the ruckus. If we're going sure. to the shuttle, I'd sacrifice the tricorder we have now to pick one up when we get to inside the shuttle. Bye. Can anybody sabotage this? I'll go ahead and sacrifice my tricorder. Oh. No, not you. I'd rather you not. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying, does anybody not? Does anybody have anything that we that has a skill that we can uh, uh, come up with something? Someone has Can we mess with a phaser? <laughs> oh, you have ex I mean, phasers are really easy to set to overload. I'm pretty sure most Starfleet issues ha really have a button that says blow up. 
given time <laughs> that it's used. You know how your cell phone has the different sounds you can pick? Does a tricorder have a sound sitting for like a doorbell that you put on a loop? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that by the 24th, 25th century, humanity has outlawed annoying ringtones. <laughs> Damn it. Alexa. <laughs> Computer. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm going to take my phaser. I will set it, and I will toss it. <laughs> all right. You, you find Should we do two of them? <laughs> that way okay. they go in two different directions? <laughs> no, nah, it's the... If they have a, I can't. We're behind can't closed doors now, anymore. right? I yeah, it's more like a heavy manhole cover, but yes. Okay, good. So, I remember when we came in with the shuttle, there were two passageways off to the left and the right of the shuttle. If we could throw something down as soon as we come in, we throw what something down one of those passageways to draw the the creepers away. Then we make the dash, and then we pick off anything that's left or tries to come at us. Sounds good. Cool. Thing is, if we make any loud noises, it's going to draw more. No matter what, we're going to be having something coming at us. All we got to do is make it from here to there. <laughs> Let's go for it. All right, we'll just go for these eight. Um, Hanar and me up in the lead. Okay, so we are going to be doing initiative, eh? Okay, let's run this. And turn. Phantom doesn't get to go. But everyone else does. Okay, so um, good guys get to go first. And who wishes to do something? Um, Helsing will be in the lead, and we'll take a shot at the first. Okay. What are we calling these things? Creepers? Skitters? Whatever you want to. What Dan, do the local call them? Uh, the J Jake, uh, they just call them bugs. Okay, bugs. Bugs. <laughs> bugs. All right. Kind of boring, but okay. A bit large for that. <laughs> Uh, if someone had focuses in, in um, what's it, a rock? No. Um, entomology? Yeah, entomology. I've seen a biology, but that's not good enough. <laughs> Might be close enough, but who knows. Okay, so you're going to take a pot shot at one. Please roll me um, control plus security. And I believe it is a difficulty okay. two to hit. Um, and I will take one dice to make it three. Sure thing. And I have a focus. Of course you do. And that's definitely a hit. Uh, so, roll me some challenge dice, please. Alright, so for a type 2, I have 8. Oof, nice. That is 6. And let me check their sheet to see how much stress these things actually have. And the answer is, well, they have resistance one because of their exoplating, but other than that, okay, it is enough to, and because they are creatures, they don't get to do that, so yeah, they just go down. Okay, which one were you pinging? The closest one. All right, so this one here. Yeah, and I guess because my minor action w would be to open the, the manhole cover and move out, and then shooting it would be the other one. Fair enough. So you are out and exposed. <clears throat> okay, Bugs' turn. Well, Bugs see that. Well, they hear ah. the sound. This one is going to go up. And it's going to attempt a melee. So this is going to be an opposed uh, daring plus security test. And because you're in an exosuit, um, your diff the difficulty is increased by one for you. 
So let's see how the bugs do. Daring plus security. Okay, so you need to roll one, you need one success in order to fend the bug off. All right, so during security. security. Mm -hmm. And I also have uh, martial arts and martial artist. Ooh. But not mean right hook like my mirror character. <laughs> Probably for the best. Oh, easy enough. <clears throat> so, because you uh, you win the defense, uh, you can immediately make an a you can immediately make an another attack against it. So, all right. Uh, or do I just do damage? I think I you just do damage. I always forget this stuff. And I have <coughs> eight damage dice <laughs> with knockdown. Okay, and because this is male, uh, it's non-lethal damage, so it is just prone for the moment. But it is not very happy. It screeches and chitters. So it's non-lethal damage. Okay, so what is? All right, I'll let you go to the next one because yeah. I forgot what my martial artist thing did. I wasn't okay. prepared. That's all right. Um, I always find it best just to have a quick summary of the talent within your character sheet itself. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, which bug was that? That was this one. Nope. Okay. So, uh, who wants to go next? Hadar should go next. Whoever's yeah. got her Hadar. All right. So someone could roll me. Uh, tell me what Hanara does. Okay. Oh, what weapons does Nara have? Uh, uh Phaser. Yeah. Okay, I have Phasers. Alright, what roll do I do? Uh, control plus security. And it's going to be a difficulty of two. Ah. <clears throat> okay, so with that, um, oh, yeah. Uh, and. Hanara attempts to fire her, or fire his weapon, and it, and just at the wrong time, the door to the, uh, the or the hatch down to the uh, sanctuary base uh, shutters, causing her, causing him to shoot wide, hitting the ceiling somewhere and causing some debris to fall loudly. It might draw out more creatures sooner rather than later. Uh, does Hanara want to move, or is he happy hiding inside the uh, bay, or in, in the door? Probably move forward. Okay, so... Helsing moved forward, right? Yep, Helsing did. Okie dokie, then. <clears throat> next bug goes this bug is now going to attempt a similar feat against Hanara so Hanara will need to roll a daring plus security test please and again because you're in an EVA suit the difficulty uh, automatically increases by one ooh bug didn't do so good this is 2d20, right? Yep, 2d, yep, 2d20. No. You have focus. Because... Okay. I was about to ask as a hand-to-hand. -hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is one. And so on a typical tie, it would go to the defender. Uh, the problem is because you're in an EVA suit, that sort of subtracts one success. So the bug <gasps> actually wins. Um, however, there's a complication. So uh, I will let... I will make the attack, but you guys get to decide what happens to the poor bug afterwards. Oh, I forgot to run down the clock. Dang. Mm -hmm. 
Can we slow him down, break a piece off of it, yeah. but... Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, so that is three. Okay, let's see how his attack goes. <clears throat> Roll me three challenge dice. Okay, so that is three stress to Hanara. And because the attack is vicious one, that's actually four damage. So no, you don't receive any injuries, Hanara, but uh, it hurts a lot. And I'm going to say that because of the complication, um, that this bug is caught up in your exosuit's uh, skeleton, or your exosuit's um, protective mesh somehow and is unable to free itself. So attacking it is automatically easier next round. Or whoever wants to attack it. So He's got him. <laughs> yeah. I'll just put that. You got here. the sample the XO wanted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, who's next? Uh, we need uh, Janet. Yeah. Uh, how can I resist shooting a bug at point blank range at Hanara? Please, please roll a crit. Please roll a crit failure. I think it'd be hilarious. <laughs> okay. Um, because it is only a, or it's in a, it's reduced difficulty, so only one degree success needed. I want it to be a crit failure, and he goes out like the Klingons in the movies. So, nope. ah! Not this time. That's a success. Roll me some dice, please. <clears throat> okay, three on that one. Okay. And six on that. Okay. Next up is one of the bugs. These bugs are too far away to actually make it to, into melee range. But they are. It is enough to get in between you and the shuttle. That one moves up. And now it is Bashir's turn. Or Vaid, whichever, whomever you wish. I'll go. Okay. If that's all right. <laughs> nope, please. She's not wanting to hang out with these bugs. Understandable. All right, it's control security, right? Uh, control security, yep. That is not enough, I'm afraid. Your phaser shot goes a little bit wide. Dang it. Ah, well. Should have done more target practice. <laughs> we'll fix that. Are you trying to... Yeah. To, are you going to still move and try to make it so it heads out? Yeah, you could try to make it and hi, either find cover or do something else with your minor action. Uh, aim the fine cover, if any. Okay. And don't forget about uh, other conflict tasks you could do, such as aiming or charging. Uh -huh. I believe phasers can do a charge attack. Uh, yes, Correct. they can. So, <clears throat> might help. You never know. Uh, next up is one of the bugs. Uh, sorry, I misheard. Are you staying there, Vade, or are you moving? Uh, moving, if she could find a spot of cover, the okay. better. I'll put her over here for now, and just remind me that she's in cover if it ever comes up. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll have this bug move up. And that's its turn. Mr. Bashir, you're the last of the good okay. guys to go. All right. Um, 
so I am going to pop out and set my phaser to overload. Okay. And I'm going to fling it in the opposite direction my people are running. Okay. Can you just ping me on the map whereabouts you want it to land? Um, let's see. Get to the map. Go away. Well, everybody spread out, didn't they? <laughs> sort of did, yeah. What are the cute little snails? Uh, well, that just means that one is un is down for the moment, oh. and the other one is gotcha. easier to hit. Technically, they're both easier to hit, but yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I just I just was like looking, and I was just like, oh, there's a cute little snail. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know why this is. I'm trying to go between the, um, Helsing and Hanar. <laughs> so you're tr right here? Yeah. Or... Okay. There you go. So you're throwing a grenade in front of your security officers? Between them. Because I got my Hello? science officer. I got science officer yeah. going left. Mm -hmm. and it's like I, I, it's like the, right between like like where those pillars are at. Is what I'm trying to say. Is uh, over that way. You realize <laughs> that's a grenade attack with area, right? You will damage your officers. Uh, you see Helsing pointing away from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, there's everybody split the wrong ways. My whole plan is like shots. Okay, um, <clears throat> okay. <sighs> I'm just going. Okay, rethink. All right. Yeah. Um. It might be a good idea to look up what phasers can do if you use the charge ability on him. Okay. Uh, for example, um, uh, the weapon has an adaptable well power supply, allows its potency to be scaled to different levels. If you can use the prepare minor action, uh, you can add one of the following to the damage effects. You can add area, intense, piercing two, or vicious one. Oh, that is fun. Mm-hmm. But I can't hit the brooks out of a barn, so. Well. Um. Okay, I am just going to follow behind. I'm going to, I am going to set it, um, and follow behind the um, Helsing. Okay. You're doing that. Cool. Okay, that means that there are three bugs left to go. They are still out of the zone. This one is going to leap above and head up to the uh, load catwalk up above, where Vayad is hiding. Oh these, yay! <laughs> these two are going to scam to skitter around the front here. How how tall is that catwalk? Uh, it's a uh, Roughly, let's see, shuttlecraft is that. So it's a full shuttle bay up. So we're looking at about 15, 20 meters. I hope you can learn tick tock and roll. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. And now I believe that is everyone's turn. So now the bad guys get to go first. We shall reset the round. So the one that is currently enmeshed in Hanara's suit is going to attempt to... Can I, can I use quick to action? Oh, yes, I believe you can. I would like to use quick to action. Very well. So once again, the good guys get to go first. And I would like to shoot using a minor action to charge my phaser. Okay. <laughs> using the area effect. All right. Should it come to it? Naturally. So if you're going to aim at one of those who is, you know, has a little icon on it, it's only going to be uh, difficulty one. Any other difficulty two? Alrighty, we'll aim at one. That one. Okay. If I went there, that would 
be able to get a couple of them, I guess. Uh, so area is done. So if you roll, you roll damage, and then area will deal that damage to nearby creatures per effect. So okay. if if you roll one effect, it will hit this one and say this one, and so on and so forth. Okay, got it. And I will use momentum. Okay. <clears throat> And that is uh, one momentum right back to you. Okay. So use it and spec in, we'll still at three. Precisely. Okay, so roll me some challenge dice, please. Okay, so that is six damage. I'd like to use one momentum to reroll the zeros. Sure. Was that three? Uh, it is three, yes. So eight damage total uh, against three targets. So that is enough to wipe him off the map. And then three more. So that would be that one, that one, and that one. And that why his Y area is extremely good, folks. Cool. Let's see, so Helsing has done his turn. And that was your minor and your regular, so we'll do the bug up top. Which way is the bug going to go? Let's see. One. It's going to pounce on Helsing. Uh, Helsing, if you could please roll me a... I'm going to do... Yeah, can you roll me... This is going to be opposed. I'm going to roll Daring Security. You're going to roll Fitness Security. Alrighty. Alright. Okay. Oh, wrong one. I am wrong. And again, the exosuit uh, does increase the difficulty. Well, it... So you need three successes in total to um, resist the bug's drop attack. And I'll pop that one momentum. All right. And fitness security. Nope. Nope. Okay, it lands right on top of you. And I will get to roll me some challenge dice. Yay, challenge dice. Oh, uh, so that's three stress to you. Alrighty. Okay, uh, that is that bug's turn. And someone else gets to go. So, okay, it's just for a recap. This mm -hmm. bug is still entangled with uh, Commander Helsing, right? It's the pre other two are. yeah. They're it's pretty much on top of them, under yeah. Entangled within. If Lieutenant Vaid was to jump from that catwalk, oh no, she's under the, from, oh, sorry, she's she's underneath. she's underneath the catwalk. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I thought all right, Mommy. I don't need her jumping on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everyone was doing it. <laughs> In any case, uh, Jackson needs to gain some distance, so I'll definitely take a step forward and see if I can assist uh, Commander Helsing. Okay. As in a melee attack or ranged? Ranged. Okay. Control security, please. Difficulty of two. Well, there's a momentum. 
Roll me some challenge dice, please. Okay. That hurts, but it it uh, jolts back a bit at the attack, but it is still quite happily t attempting to use its large scything claws to uh, pry Mr. Helsing open like a can of beans. As you do. Or maybe like a bag of chips. Either or. They're both full of hot air. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Commander throwing shade. Oh. Uh, Mr. Hanara is going to be charged by another one of the little buggy things. Uh oh. Yeah. Another uh, opposed fitness security test, please, Hanara. Or, no, not fitness. Daring security. Sorry. Hand hands, good, right? Oh, perfect. Ooh, all right. Uh, so you get um, one momentum out of that. <clears throat> and you're able to immediately roll challenge dice to damage, please. How many? Um, so security uh, score plus one. Uh, so Hanara is... Four, so five security or five uh, challenge dice, please. Okay. And that is that. I need to roll to see if it can stay upright or get knocked down. Come get these paws. Hmm. It gets knocked down. Okay, this bug is, despite the um, bulkiness of the exosuit, you've, Hanara has found himself in some sort of zen mode, despite the fact it's an ugly bug. And that tails two damage. Neat. Okay. Uh, someone's, who wants to go next? I will. Okay. I am going to try to pull it off of him. All right. Pull the bug off of Helsing. All right. Um, opposed daring securities, please. You're the attacker, so you roll first. Oh. Okay. This is... Security. Well, congratulations. Nothing actually is accomplished. This <laughs> is... <laughs> All right. So, um, you, uh, so you're grabbing Mr. Helsing by one arm, the bug's grabbing him by the other, and you're de yanking in the wrong directions. At least that's what I'm imagining. <laughs> okay. So I am going to actually use call to action ah. for my, and give him a free minor action. Okay. All right. Now what can one do as a minor action? That's a good question. Well, let's see. Conflict tasks. Well, tell me what you want to do with that minor action there, uh, Mr. Helsing. I will say that you could throw him off without doing damage, but and that would at least make it easier for, or it won't make it so hard. No, what am I going with this? You can throw him off, and that will make the next grapple check a, or next melee attack with on even terms. All right, we'll go ahead. Throw him. Sure thing. Uh, daring security, please. And throwing bug creatures as a focus. I <laughs> don't think you have that, but you have martial artists, which I think would work well okay. enough. Okay, that'll work. I mean, it's a pretty niche focus, but you know, you never know when it's going to come up. Yeah, that is true. That is true. 
You did say you had a bunch of extra XP now. How about <laughs> you just learned <laughs> that ability? <laughs> and oh wow, bug holds on tight. <laughs> yeah. Nice try, Helsing. Oh, bad. oh well. But I'll be a nice GM and say that it doesn't get a free attack on you. So that was Hels or that was Bashir's turn. Now it's the bug's turn. Let's see, that one's already done. I think it's just this one left. Yes. Well, Hanara, you must be popular because the other one is now coming up to attack you. So a uh, similar role, uh, con daring security. Use it. Use a little man. Oh, it hits. It hits. Okay. Nice. Okay, that's another three points of stress to Hanara. And at this point, uh, Hanara, your internal, your suit's internal alarm begins going off, warning you that there is a, a breach to the environmental sis to environmental containment. Mm. <clears throat> And Quick now, question. Yes. GM. Uh, Hanar's taken, what, seven damage now? Does that count as an injury, or is that just when they take five at one point? It's uh, five at one point, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Good. Excuse me. Uh, now, only good guys are left, so I believe it is Vaid and Jackson. No. Um, hang on. Have, I Nose goes. Um, yeah, sorry, Vaid and Hanara. I'm sorry. Ah, um, I'll go ahead and move Vaid first. Sure. If anything. Um, I guess now the question is, does she help Helsing or not? Uh, no, the bugs are going to go first next round, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you help me, Hanara should be able to take care of the other ones. Should I just go ahead and set that my tricorder up though to like loud noise I don't know they're already engaging swing your tricorder like a baseball bat let's do it <laughs> okay so what are you or going to do chop it. Um, pro uh, I guess frequencies on the tricorder okay set it to a high, high pitch to okay. kind of mess with their all right. Uh, roll me daring plus science, please. Uh, difficulty of one. I guess. Uh, yeah. Would sensors or hacking work? Uh, I'll let hacking work in this instance. <clears throat> and that's two momentum. And you now have a screaming tricorder. So if she tired can... of... <laughs> chuck it. She's gonna chuck it <laughs> underneath the, um, like, uh, if okay. she's able. Okay. So that will be your full action. The f minor action to pre to prepare the tricorder and the major action to throw it. Okay. Cool. Crossing the fingers. <laughs> All right. And now I believe it is Hanara's turn. Um. Um, Vade, if you're going to run Hanar, yeah. recommend you do kind of like what Helsing did. Do the charge action and then do it as area. At least take two of them out. The ones in front of him? Yeah. Yeah, I've probably got to go ahead and do that. Would he be in that blast? No. Um, it's for how, how the rules work, it only targets enemies. Okay. Go for that. So am I. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> control, uh, control security, please, Hanara. Difficulty of use two. momentum. You can use momentum. Okay. Uh, one or two. It would be one for the third dice and two additional for a fourth dice. 
So Speaking one. Of, yeah, just use one. Do I have to add a dice to the roll or? Uh, yeah. So you'll in the drop down it'll say you know two d twenty, three d twenty, four d twenty. So that's where you add. So you say three d twenty. Ooh, three successes. So that's one more momentum. Uh, roll me challenge dice, please. I think that's five challenge dice. Or is that six? Um, three for the phaser, and then four for her. Ah, sorry, oh. seven. Uh, I'm theory. sorry. Uh, seven oh, no. total challenge dice. So roll me two more, please. Okay. Uh, so that is six plus one more. And that's one effect, so that's both creatures targeted. And that is both creatures are out of the out of the fight. Reduce them to green bug salsa. And now there's one bug left and a screaming tricorder or a screaming helsing. Um well, it's already on Helsing, so it's just going to continue to attack. I'm not screaming. No, you're probably not. Shouting Loudly. angrily. <laughs> internally. Yes, internally. Okay. Uh, so, once again, a opposed daring security, please. And I'm going to use a momentum. Okay. Or fitness security from that. Uh, nope, daring security. Daring. Fitness security was that one time just because I wanted to see if you would dodge out of the way of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that is in. I believe that. Let's see. Uh, let's see. If the target wins the opposed task, then they're considered to have made a successful attack, which. Is it's a tie, so I don't believe. Let's see. I always forget where a tie goes. Oh wait, you're. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh right, you are in an exosuit, which means that one of those successes is nullified. So the bug wins. Gotcha. Yep. Bug wins, people. Bug bugs always win. So as he continues to rip through the exosuit, does that mean I'm not in an exosuit? <laughs> Well, bug, I think that's the first time I've ever seen challenge dice roll zero damage. <laughs> that is a straight up draw there, my friend. Okay. <laughs> You're just holding the claws with your um, mitted hands going, not today, bug. Not today. <laughs> and it is everybody else's turn. So who wants to do what? I want to try to pull a bug off of him again. Okay. <laughs> Opposed uh, daring security, please. And I will let Mr. Helsing assist in this task, just because, you know, it is currently clinging to him. Woohoo! Yay! Would you like to use a momentum, sir? Yeah, I would. I would. Oh, that's a lot of... That's a good roll there. So a grand total of six. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah. My, minus one success because you're in the exosuit. So that's a grand total of four. Yeah, so that's like four more momentum for you guys. And what would you like to do with a bug there, Bashir? We're maxed. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I got my sample. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Holding it by one leg out in front of you. <laughs> okay. I just tuck it under my arm like a like football. <laughs> like a squirmy, stabby football. Stabby football, yes. <laughs> okay. Um. Just because you succeeded so much, I will let that happen because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's even better because that's the one I keep alive. That. Just tormented Helsing. <laughs> oh God! This okay. and Toga are gonna be the bane of my existence. <laughs> okay, so that's effectively the end of combat. And who? 
So, um, it isn't long before your your um, built-in sensors detect more life signs starting to scuttle down the hallway. That would probably be the uh, reinforcements that were coming thanks to the clattering of the initial poor phaser volley. You didn't move, arm. people. Okay. So you're heading into the shuttle, I presume? Yes. Okay. Helsing will lead. Okay, where's the interior? There's the interior. So everybody is here except for the Shran because he is tagging along in the back, not wanting to cause a fuss. Yeah, Hanar is at the rear as well. Miss Jackson, you're behind me. If Big can pick up her tricorder. <laughs> no. Go to the no. They get in line. Move, move. Actually, I was gonna say since he's not technically here yet, uh, let's just leave him here. <laughs> I mean, he could be Elias, Elias into the uh, community. That's up to you guys. That I, I'm just saying. I well, because we're going to have to like. I figured that he would be the engineer. He might have our because I remember us specifically grabbing the transport. Uh, things maybe that we can because uh, uh, I was thinking about staying behind myself but since yeah. he's not here yet and on his way that he can stay with these people that we have the... <laughs> alright okay so Mr. Helsing you are the first into the shuttle uh, what you find is interesting because so uh, you open up the shuttle bay, or you open up the shuttlecraft doors, and it looks like someone has gone inside the shuttle with a machete. Uh, consoles are slashed, there's scrape marks all over the place, uh, trend, uh, several of the seats are torn apart. Um, the sh uh, one of the shuttlecraft's piloting consoles is uh, literally almost sliced in half, and there is one bug on inside. Uh, however, it is currently appears to be comatose. Um, aim mm -hmm. on disintegrate. Is that a setting? Um, not for. F I mean, I'm willing to say that it is for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I if this don't. thing is, I can just see this thing being ready to release a whole bunch of baby critters. <laughs> It, not, no. Okay. no, 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 no. Or we just throw it. Uh, I pick it up and throw it out. Okay. It does not resist you as you pick it up and throw it out. Uh, it appears to be dead. <clears throat> um, as once you, ha um, there. As you are picking it up and throwing it outside, the internal shuttle systems um, immediately alert all of you through your environmental suits. Warning, environment of shuttle has been compromised and is not suitable for life for, um, eh, is not suitable for habitation without pr proper protective equipment. Please contact your away team leader for proper per safety precautions. Oh, sir? The thing did a number inside the uh, the shuttle. Of course it did. Ms. Jackson, okay. is it still flyable? Well, that's a good question. Um, if Ms. Jackson could please do me a insight plus engineering and because she is currently the flight officer she could substitute that for con I very much will and Helsing and Hanara will start looking at uh, other suits and anything else we need if we have to go into orbit alright so two degrees of success the um, fly the shuttle is flyable um, however, the uh, the 
ah, part of the altitude control system and the internal dampeners were damaged with the attack. It's flyable, but it's going to be a bit more of a bumpy ride going up than coming down. And considering how bumpy that ride was... We had two transporter pads? I believe you had one. Only one pad? Yeah. Well, we could transport we had out two. if we need to. We had we two, don't... but the bug was trapped in the buffer of the oh, other one. Yes, that's right. But then it got out. Got it. Then it got... Yeah, so yeah. obviously there is no... Uh, the bug is now clear of the buffer and has been violently ejected from the shuttle. So those are your choices, sir. Transporter off of one pad, one at a time, or bumpy right up. Well, I thought with the radiation in the atmosphere, we couldn't transport back to the ship anyway. Am I right about that or that wrong? That is... It's not impossible, it's just a difficulty... F um, let's see. It's a difficulty four task, just if you're beaming from one pad to another. We do have one of the best transporter chiefs in Starfleet. <laughs> no pressure, right? Right. I'd much rather take the chance to get us airborne than... I agree. ...suggest using the transport. Sir, I'm confident in my abilities. I'll get us in the air. And we all have... Well, is there anything with... Is there enough of another EV suit? Or... That Hanar can... Yeah, uh, Hanar and Helsing were looking through anything we have left <laughs> over for suits to patch up the damages that we have. Right. I assume that in the shuttle there... There's been enough environmental suit damage over the years of Star Trek that I assume that most shuttlecraft have emergency duct tape. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, there's enough uh, sealant that you're able to patch it up. Um, however, uh, Nara has absorbed a bit of radiation, and it might be a good idea to figure out what to do with that. Or what to do about that when you get back to the ship. Red be gone? Uh, wrong universe. Hmm. Damn it. All right, Lieutenant Jackson, take us up. I say. Okay, so we are... Now, if I recall correctly, now, um, is the Nighthawk in atmospheric? Is the Nighthawk in the atmosphere, or is it still in orbit? I believe we're still in orbit. Okie dokie. We questioned about going into the atmosphere, but we didn't commit to it yet, so... Okay. So, you are here, and the U.S. And the USS Phantom is attempting to make its way out of the hellscape that is this planet. So, if Miss Jackson could please roll me a... Uh, so, we can do this one of two ways. One is, um, the shuttle is damaged enough that it cannot assist... Or the shuttle can assist, and I increase the difficulty by one. Which way would you guys like to do this? Shuttle assist could get you up to two. Potentially. Uh, yeah, let's go do that. Let's, yes, let's come the pilot, with the shuttle assist. Assist. Exactly. Let's come in with the shuttle assist. Okay, so shuttle mm -hmm. assist. So, do me a... Um, do me a control plus con check, please. Um, the first one, the shuttle is going to assist with structure plus con. And this is going to be a difficulty of three. That is so far one success from Miss Jackson. No success from the shuttle. It is a very bumpy ride. The bug might have done more damage than initially in expected. As the shuttle begins to spin itself up, there is a <laughs> sound as it uh, fails to take off the first time. Care to try that again, please? Come on, baby, hold together. <laughs> you, got, you got momentum. 
in this case, I will spend one more momentum to get an extra die because, I mean, if we don't even get airborne, we're not making it out of here. <laughs> yep. There's the three. There's the three successes you need. The shuttle takes off. The structural integrity field is holding. It's due to the failure of the inertial dampeners. Everything you feel every bump of the uh, flight, but it's sort of like being on a uh, boat on rocky seas. Can you roll me an, um, roll me another control con? Sh this time shuttle will assist with engines plus con. Again, difficulty of, let's see, it was difficulty two coming down. Yeah, difficulty three going up. I advise you all to hold on to the best of your ability. <laughs> that sounds logical. Any momentum? Uh, sure. We got a few to spend here. Okay, that's two from the shuttle. Dope. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're making momentum to get rid of it? Most definitely. I don't feel like exploding in the atmosphere. Aww. <laughs> you can't explode. There's like two or three main characters on board. Uh, I don't feel like crashing back and down to the Aww. surface with the bugs <laughs> <laughs> converging at our position. Fair enough. Plot armor only goes so far. Um, a radiation tornado uh, catches the USS Phantom in its or in its um, da, what's the phrase I'm looking for um, in its extremities uh, just on the extremities of the storm and threatens to pull the Phantom in however uh, through Miss Jackson's deft control only one of you gets sick if each one of you could please roll me a uh, fitness plus medicine test, please. I'm going to set this as difficulty one. Miss Jackson, you're immune from this just because of your being in control of the actual pilot. And any focuses? Um, if you have, like, strong constitution or um, iron stomach, something like that would work. Small craft probably would work, too. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> Okay, Bashir, you managed to make it. Uh, Mr. Helsing makes it. Um, uh, I got Honora. Okay, uh, okay. Lieutenant Vayed, it's not pretty inside your suit right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Honora makes it. Yeah, so the one who gets sick is Lieutenant Vayed. Um, the suit sadly still is on and yeah while we're trying to uh, ascend I'd like to at least attempt to contact the night high just you know, general general we're coming in hot prepare sick bay or of course. Meet emergency medical team to the shuttle bay of course uh, that would be a um dump. sorry roll me pl pl uh, blah, blah, blah. presence plus command, please. Uh, shuttle can assist with communications plus command. Uh, difficulty of one. And that's a no-go from the shuttle, I'm afraid. Uh, there's still too much radiation interference between you and the ship. And the fact that the bug pro took out half the control console probably doesn't help. Uh, roll me a daring plus con, please. Uh, shuttle can assist with engines con. Difficulty of three. And what did you say the shuttle was? Uh, engines con. Roger that. Oh, Phantom comes through in a pinch. That is the three successes you need. The USS Phantom breaks through the heaviest of the radiation's clouds and makes itself into orbit, where you can now hail the USS Nighthawk. OK. 
Captain, you're on the bridge, and um, uh, Miss Loxley, who is man managing tactical, as uh, Captain, the Phantom has just broken through the atmosphere. Well, very well. Let's uh, open healing frequencies. Let's let's get some eyes on them. Yes, sir. What do internal sensors look like? Looks like they've taken a beating, sir, on the inside of their shuttle. On the inside? She shrugs. <laughs> well, if whatever they went down there, it probably wasn't easy for them. <laughs> Thanks for the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, see. You said frequencies are open? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Captain, we need an emergency science and medical team to shuttle bay. We're coming in hot. <laughs> Understood, Commander. Can you give me any more details? We'll have a briefing as soon as we get in. I have a specimen of a fun little creature that I'm holding like a football still. <laughs> and uh... We found a ship, a Federation ship. Well, I'm sure this is all very inter interesting, but let's make sure we get your injuries <laughs> repaired first. In any case, I'll uh, go ahead and also request a security team to meet them in the shuttle bay just in case, because uh, the Commander Bashir is bringing back something from the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay. you know, dot my eyes, cross my teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phase three containment field, level it's three. Not the, it's not the first time he's heard me bring back something that needs a security team. <laughs> uh, so it's about this point, Bashir, as uh, Miss Jackson brings the shuttle in for final approach, that the uh, creature in your arms, bear hug <laughs> thing, uh, begins to start struggling less and less. It was struggling a severe amount but it's now starting to look like it's falling asleep or entering becoming comatose okay as we cut to the oh, that's not what I wanted to do we're doing this to the shuttle bay <laughs> okay we are now in the shuttle bay safe arrival as best as can it, as best it can be so, who wants to be here? We will have a um, representative from Sick Bay, which will be Mr. Coox, because he's very interested in seeing this. And apparently his token art broke somehow. I will have to figure out how to fix that after. Oh, no. He shows up. What? Is he showing up on the anyone token else? token still works? Well, that's the weird thing. Negative. Um... I'm not sure. It's showing up on the stream version, but not on my version. What now the... there's two of them. They're multiplying. <laughs> like, this is making very little I... sense to me. Um, yeah. okay, I don't we'll see just... them at all on mine. Huh. Yeah, on the stream the stream version, there's two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Now I okay. apparently have to con so Firefox is not showing all the tokens right but they're showing up fine at least for me in Chrome now it could be that because they're cached images it's just that he's out of temporal phase we got yeah. another mystery on our hands yes we do <laughs> um, so <laughs> he he messed with those experiments with Todd's that I've not been playing with him. it will be Chief Nurse Zot because we have a working token for her okay and the binars, because that's the science team I need. Very well. The science team for the binars. Okay. So we have Miss Vaid, Mr. Helsing, Mr. Bashir. And then we have, from security, we have Hinara. And Miss Jackson. Okay. We probably also have at least yes, 
and uh, Leza here from ah, yeah. my minor security team for just just to make sure nothing else is going wrong. Wise idea. Sounds good. Um, uh, as soon as you reach, or as soon as you get step out of the shuttle bay, a shuttlecraft, um, the creature in your arms, Bashir, spasms and then goes completely limp. Damn. <clears throat> All right. Um, if they bring uh, whatever whatever they brought for cont- uh, attainment, um, I just picture a big like big glass or something we just covered in or something, <laughs> or just you know whatever sort of containment field that they brought in. Yeah. I want to get it to the science lab immediately, okay? So I can start checking these things out. Um, Very well. And uh, well, technically, Lieutenant. This is yours. I have to brief the captain. <laughs> what happened? Because <laughs> I'm I'm going full science off again, and I'm not. You are. <laughs> okay. So uh, apparently, Miss Vaid, you are now in charge of bug dissection. I'm sorry. I, I just realized. <laughs> wait a second. Not the science officer anymore. <laughs> Okay, so those are sciencey people. Um, uh, Nurse Zot, take take a look at Hanara. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zot begins scanning each of you with a tricorder, and immediately recommends that you. Um, uh, she stops Vaid and anyone <laughs> else from actually leaving the shuttle bay, and advises that you discard your radiation-soaked exos or your radiation-soaked suits um and then if Mr. Hanara after that's done please join me in sick bay because you have a significant amount of radiation poisoning so the one that has the most hair could be losing hair yeah I mean it was only about a 10 minute exposure to okay. one of the most radio radioactive substances in the world so yes <laughs> uh, quite possibly um hanara might get a mane by the end of this that's all the hair that'll be left <laughs> anyways <clears throat> maybe we'll stop calling she that if she's got a big oh, God. maybe so <laughs> okay um, so we're uh we're going to have a scene change so we'll lose one okay. momentum We'll do, and before we go on that GM, I want to have um, Yaz and um, Lisa Nol to do a quick scan with the of the shuttle, make sure there's nothing in there. No that babies. There's no, babies, no babies, babies left. <laughs> no babies. Left. Nothing organic should be coming out. It should be left on Good that. Call commander. <laughs> should be put into a, a, a containment field as well while it's here. Of course, standard uh, radiation decontamination process protocol and potential biohazard security. Considering gotcha. what you brought back, uh, they'll do some very thorough, low-level phaser sweeps of the entire shuttle. Very well. Okay, so we are going to take a quick. Um, normally, I'd like to do another scene before we break, but I kind of have to use the bathroom. So we are going to take an early bio, and we will be back at, let's say, half past the hour. So I will see you guys momentarily.
And we are back, folks. And we are going to cut into Sick Bay, which seems to be the better place to analyze slash dissect a organic being. And I believe Miss Vayed is taking the lead. And if people want to play supporting characters or any other personnel, feel free to bring them in. So, Miss Vayed, you are. Okay. So by the time you reach Sick Bay, the creature is obviously dead. It has stopped breathing in any way, shape, and form, and has stopped putting up any form of resistance. Alrighty. Uh, I'd like to do a scan, uh, like an in-depth scan of it, if possible. Sure. And check for, like, any potential uh, movement within. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still thinking it's going to burst open and thousands oh, yeah. of tiny spiders are going... Okay. Uh, that would be a... Um, Insight plus medicine test, I think, in this case. And any number of the um, individuals here can just roll to assist. Since I have xenobiology, does that, that would work, work well? Appropriate? Okay. Uh, it is difficulty two, I should say. <clears throat> so who's rolling to assist? Zen will assist. Okay. And Insight Medicine. Insight Medicine, please. Uh, biology. Biology will work. Cool. So that is three successes, so one momentum. <clears throat> so there are, first things first, is there are no parasites, larvae, um, fetuses, Anything that could potentially grow into another one of these things inside this thing. Um, second thing is um, the creature is not designed to breathe a class M environment. Uh, it appears to be it, yeah, it appears to thrive off carbon dioxide and a methane environment, similar to the class N planet that you were coming from. So it basically suffocated. <clears throat> Uh, third thing is is that it does not have the brain power necessary for sentient thought. Uh, it acts primarily on instinct. And I believe you've figured out the rest of it already, whereas it is blind, has really good uh, um, perception by hearing and touch. And as science officer, you get one free question. The ex does it have an exoskeleton, and does that help it, I guess, against ah. our weapon? Yes, so it does have an exoskeleton that is, uh, it oozes a thick, viscous material that protects it not only against the harsh, corrosive at and radiation atmosphere, but also it does protect itself slightly against uh, directed energy weapons. Alrighty. More info. More info. <laughs> if you want to ask more questions, that'll cost a momentum. Uh, I'm gonna see. Uh, so okay, we already know the cause of death. Um, she's gonna be recording all of this, and <laughs> it's like interesting. <laughs> Uh, Lieutenant, maybe yes. just since we've had Hanara come through for his radiation treatment, maybe think of a security implication. That viscous material on the outside, is that something that could possibly be replicated? It might be of interest to Starfleet. Not only that, but do you think that could potentially be poisoning Hanara? Ooh. Potentially. We definitely need to get a sample. We can run it through the um, the computer banks and do some type of correlation. Yeah, I forgot to All right, here. then. Uh, going to go ahead and go for that sample. Okay. The exoskeleton. Awesome. So, uh, roll me a second insight medicine test, I believe. Uh, this will be a difficulty of, well, 
let's say probably difficulty one at this point and there's another momentum okay Oh, I assume Zen was assisting? Oh, yeah, sorry. Apologies. Yes, okay. Zen can assist. No problem. And I am... Something has gone screwy with my characters. Because I'm seeing far too many things. Okay, never mind. I'm good. I just expanded the wrong menu. I'm like, holy cow, I have all these characters. Okay. Um... So, apologies, sorry, my uh, my train of thought got derailed, but it's back now, I promise. So, the viscous material, it's a very um, it's a very complex and dense uh, polymer chain, um, which it is possible to synthesize. It's just very um, uh, takes a lot of energy to do so. So you're not going to get a heck of a lot of it each time. Um, if you're thinking of slathering up every individual on the colony with it so that they can walk unharmed through the atmosphere that's not going to work i'm afraid um, however there's, there are some very interesting anti-radiation properties about it it seems to take the radiation into itself and as it does so it will sort of harden encapsulate it and um, uh, absorb the energy uh, harden encapsulate it and then the warriors will use that as additional armor were these the warrior yes. of them or drones okay as far as you can tell these are the warriors uh, what you know of insect cultures of course you haven't actually seen anything else but yes there's an Panara is sick poor kitty Uh, are we going to be able to take any of the samples and see if we can figure out a way to get them better fast? Ah. Oh, sorry. That was the second thing. Is it's not um, Hanara is not infected with it. It's not a. It's not poisoning him. It's just exposure to the, the radiation. Uh, the radiation. Got it. Uh, polonium radiation is one of the most intense radiations known to 20th century science. Um, it normally has a very short half-life where it basically could kill anyone almost immediately but thankfully most of the radiation in the atmosphere is going through some stage of half-life decay for the most part so it's not fatal but hanar is basically out for the rest of the episode um well uh two things one would helsing because he also took some damage as well. He just wasn't in his bad shape. Or... Uh, Helsing took damage, but it wasn't enough for a suit puncture. Good to go. And then um, Zenalask. Zen so, there have been cases of uh, some life that it can be reanimated or, or brought back if it's brought back into its uh, natural environment. If we brought this back into that class in environment and increase the radiation levels do you think it might come back probably not for it was just dissected and pulled apart <laughs> oh <But> okay uh, <laughs> oh man probably not no no prob not, not this one but another one maybe in an ideal scenario which this is not <laughs> is there any way to run a test that would show that um, with your previous successes, this one is definitely stone dead. Um, the bugs, uh, their, uh, their immune system is not, or their internal circulatory system is not all that robust. They, their evolution seems to have, um, forced them to have a very strong exoplating exo and, um, Ah, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, protection systems. But once dead, they just seem to stay dead. And you see Hanara give a sigh of relief. Good. I hate to think we have to kill him again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
If the GM is going to use zombie scenarios on you, he'll come up with something new. Trust me. Oh, that was really weird. Oh? That echo just now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear anything. Sorry, I must have shifted my mic. Oh, yeah, you're still... <laughs> oh, you're real bad. Uh-oh. Stand by. No joy. I change Discord servers and see if that helps. Oh, thanks. I was just about to do so. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Do I sound all right now? Yes. yes. Cool. Yes. Okay. Apologies for that. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So there's GM will not be throwing a zombie scenario at you this today. But thank you for the idea for next time. Anybody else wish to do anything else in this particular? Is there a way to do um, a test, uh, I, I guess, try, try to recreate materials to test what kind of weapons would work best against it? I guess, like, fast uh, prototype. Ah. Okay, so you're looking for, like, a um, firing range kind of tests. Yes. Ooh, that sounds like a fun thing to do in the holodeck. We can visit that with you at Helsing shortly. Uh, okay. Let's have a chat between the captain and his first officer and I'm assuming will this happen in the briefing room or in the ready room or somewhere else um, I would say yeah all the officers in the briefing are okay. uh... so briefing room uh, Miss Vaid you are just about to follow through on this idea when the captain asks everyone to the conference room Oh, boo. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. It's been a while since people have been in here. Okay. Do that, do that. Then. Okay. Um, Captain, it is your scene. Well, it definitely seems like you guys have been on an adventure. But I'm honestly more concerned about the actual injured crew members that we have. Is everybody all right? Uh, yes, I checked on Hanar before I came up. He's recovering. He, he was the only him. one seriously hurt, um, and that was radiation poisoning. Um... Yeah, so we pretty much, we found a, the Excelsior ship that was giving the signal, and there it's turned into somewhat of a generational ship. And there are 90 colonists that are offspring of the Crash Federation vessel. They are living underground um, and surviving fairly well, but would like to come back I can understand that but before we do so there's a few questions that I need answers from a sociological standpoint is this does this colony have stable leadership I know I spoke to uh, that man over the view screen but since you guys were there for a brief period of time do you foresee any instability that might make this evacuation more difficult I didn't notice anything. I mean, we didn't spend a lot of time. We didn't meet a lot of the people. Um, it does seem to be a closed off colony. I mean, it will probably take them some time to reintegrate into society. I would definitely believe that. Um, what was it like a hundred years have yeah, passed? Roughly. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, they've been isolated for over a hundred years and are almost third generational of a Starfleet crew. Um, but I didn't notice anything like, but we didn't really get a lot of their political structure or anything like that detail wise yet. Uh, we didn't take a poll of how many people actually really wanted to leave, but the ones we did talk to didn't want to stay. I see. 
Well, in any case, if there's only 90 of these individuals, I'm sure that Nighthawk absolutely has the crew space to accommodate him. At least it's not a ma- <laughs> as much of a mass evacuation as I may have thought. Regardless of which, uh, it seems like there's two issues that we need to take care of. Uh, the potential of the cr- other life forms on the surface and what I think you may have cut out there captain oh sorry uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it was my, my internet was fluxing there are two things that we need to take care of uh, the other life forms on the surface and what exactly are we going to do uh, with the whatever the actual test was uh, with the Excelsior class ship with this atmosphere if there's anything else that we need to know of since the even though we got the general aspect of whatever this classified test was out of the way there are still at least not enough of the actual initial mission that we know of and I'm concerned if we leave the planet's surface I want to make sure we're not leaving something here for anybody else Um, I know that they, uh, dropped their warp core, um, before the crash. Um, that was the experimental warp core that they were trying to test to, uh, I said, well, we have some idea where it's at, um, but we couldn't pinpoint it exactly. I do feel you're correct. Um, if we could salvage that, it would be a beneficial to experiment with that to see if it was a, you know, obviously it was a failed experiment, but, you know, a hundred years ago, who knows what we could come up with. In any case, I have requested an update or at least additional information from Director Chalmers, but that's going to take some time to arrive. And we got to take care of these people here and now. And I'm also wondering, is there any way that the... Is, Lieutenant Vayad, is, can you... Have you been able to actually track the evolutionary uh, patterns of these creatures since the disaster that happened a century ago? So, so we know this planet exactly wasn't the type of atmosphere that it is now and it was caused by the experiment and i'd like to know if we were to make any other additional changes to the atmosphere how the creatures would be effective or if they were affected prior to our arrival actually i actually he's got a good point the thing created the poisonous atmosphere and they breathe poisonous atmosphere so these creatures are probably not naturally from this planet. Or they were a non-dominant species that just evolved over time to the, to, on an accelerated pace because of the, the sudden shift. That's a really good point. I Sorry, I believe Vade wanted to interject? Well, she wanted to interject and say that she did not think to check for the ev- evolutionary um, consequences <laughs> of the warp core. Thank well, you for the save, <laughs> sir. <laughs> don't worry about it. I know you have a lot on your plate right now, so by all means, task all available science teams to wherever you feel you need to, you you need the most. Uh, wherever you need help. Yes, sir. Um, also, I want to point out that uh, I would like to, since we have a sample, I would like to test uh, potential weapons that could work against these creatures in case we uh, have a larger altercation with them, besides that small group we ran into. <laughs> like, quick that prototyping. Seems, that seems for the best. We should not probably also hail the the colony once again they probably have at least a bit more tactical information at providing these creatures since they've been on this planet for so long but if well any... so we could invite the leader of the colony up we left uh 
the strand down there with pattern buffers. <laughs> if the actual transport link is stable, then by all means, go ahead and beam them up. But in any case, if you feel like there's any tactical information that you could gain from these creatures, uh, or if you feel like if there's anything in particular or any materials that you could be replicated, go ahead and do so. In any case, uh, Commander Bashir, uh, go ahead and invite the... I'm forgetting his name right now. I can't remember either. Uh, I believe his... I say I believe because I literally have his token here. Uh, his name is Kaval. Kaval, thank you. Go ahead and uh, invite Kaval to the Nighthawk and prepare a general plan for the, evacu the evacuation of the planet. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and meet with him, and you all have your assigned orders and duties. Let's get started. Let's not keep these people waiting any more than they have to. Uh, sir, I also wanted to know if we might be able to task some of the engineering crew. Um, from right, because Sot had a, a good bit in some covert skills on covert devices, but making almost like a sonic grenade, a distractor that... Um, we could throw it or get the little skitters away from us if need be. Tenevea did something similar with her tricorder. It worked very well. By all means, go ahead and take charge of that. If you need to run any other additional simulations, the holodex are at your disposal. Right. There should be a very low threat, non-lethal device. It should not increase our threat too much. <clears throat> In other words, don't give the GM escalation. Aww. <laughs> oh, yeah, <man. laughs> he, he, he's up to it. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I still have some threat, but I'd always like more. Anyways. <clears throat> so, Greedy. We are. So the it sounds like we are going to try to bring uh, Mr. Cavill onto the, onto the ship? We would like to. Okay, so who is going to meet him in the transporter room? I will. Okay. All right. Oh, you stupid layers. Make it work. There we go. Okay, so we have ourselves Mr. Bashir. Okay, so uh, despite the patchy communication through down to uh, Thashran, uh, Thashran says that the transporters of uh, ah, the transporter enhancers are in place, but it's such a narrow beam that only one individual can transport at a time. And he does, and he doesn't think that they will last too long with the ener energy demands on that's placed on them. However, that does not stop him from beaming Mr. Caval to the ship. Now, the tall, uh, lanky Vulc or half Vulcan, uh, steps forward. And, uh, he sort of step, he marvels at the, uh, level of technology and the cleanliness of the ship, and steps forward to shake your hand, Mr. Bashir. Commander. I will. Caval, it's good to see you again. Oh, Welcome aboard the USS Nighthawk. I'm. I had not I had not imagined setting foot on another Federation vessel in my life. I am pleased to say that my mother's stories of their cleanliness uh, do you, do you justice. Would you like something to eat? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll basically take him to mess hall, show him replicators and things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Um, just passing and then afterwards um, uh, take him to the uh, captain's ready room very well he takes several um, pieces of meat and several desserts some of which you notice that he's eating and others you notice that he's packaging mm. and it's not too long before you bring him to the captain's ready room Uh, that starts with an R. It is here. To 
two of you. Don't need two of you. There's that. And here is the captain. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Kaval. He extends his hand in greeting. Captain Singral. I extend the appreciation of the colony and the survivors of the Veritas for your benevolence and your assistance. So I'll go ahead and walk over to the replicator and go ahead and replicate two bottles. Or, well, I don't want to see overindulgent this man is a Vulcan. One bottle of Vulcan brandy. <laughs> Very well. Uh, he drinks and sort of does it. <laughs> um, uh, this is apparent. Uh, he regains his composure fairly quickly. This is... It is unusual to have alcohol this pure captain we've been able to s distill some form of alcoholic beverage in the colony but it is definitely not in comparison to this i believe mr jacobs refers to it as sludge wine well our replicators don't necessarily have that but if this evacuation is successful you should we could probably add that pattern to the database if you are still so inclined I do not believe that is necessary. Well, Mr. Cable, I'll go ahead and be brief and get down to brass tacks. I was unaware that we were being taxed for our evacuation. Has the Federation changed its monetary practices? Well, not unless you go closer to the Bajoran system, but regardless of which, <laughs> no, not, not here in the Expanse. He nods. Very well. Please proceed. In any case, I need to actually get a read on this evacuation scenario. In my opinion, even though Commander Bashir, well, at least in my mind, even though Commander Bashir is still putting a plan together, there are two effective ways that we could potentially evacuate this colony safely. One is to set up all of our transporter systems in series. Uh, we did upon our initial descent we did have place a few hoppers in within the atmosphere and although we do have the pattern enhancers on the surface it doesn't necessarily seem like they'll serve us for the largest amount of time we probably might be it will probably be able to tap all of the nighthawk systems plus our additional shuttle craft if we needed to bring up more than a few people at a time another one that's option number one at least in my mind number two is actually getting the rest of our homes in it and also taking the Nighthawk closer into the atmosphere and evacuating you all manually. Well, I'm, I'm sure you guys have actually thought about this for some time, and I know you suggested your crystal could be used as an amplifying beam for the transporters, but I need to know, do, do you really feel like that, sh that plan is a shadow working? It was the plan that we were working on at the time, Captain. The initial plan was to somehow acquire the experimental generator and attach it to the Veritas's transporter systems because they are deep within the ship's superstructure they would probably not be too affected by the radiation damage however if your ship is capable of atmospheric flight that might that would be the safest option we would still have to bring the colonists up to the surface for the for a mass transport to happen but it is definitely possible we would have we would have to defend them from attacks from the creatures of course but it is definitely possible well my science and tactical and uh, security officers are looking into better ways of defending ourselves against these creatures mm -hmm. In any case, if the Nighthawk were to be brought in atmosphere, we can use the ship defenses to put, to assist on a much wider scale. He frowns and nods very well. There is so, tactical advantage, of course, in having a starship-powered weaponry. Given the fragile nature of the Veritas itself, it might not be logical to upset its delicate superstructure any further than mu it must be though after all it is our only way in and out of our home 
I agree. But speaking of the Veritas, that brings me to my last point, which is the initial experiment that marooned you here, unfortunately, in the first place. The, exper the experimental drive that was a part of the ship. Our sensors and our team have been unable to locate it. Do you have a better idea where that could be found? I ha we have uh, uh, my engineer, ma our maintenance technician, is the descendant of the chief engineer of the Veritas. We have coordinates of where we had ejected the core. We had expected it to have uh, died over these last several years, but the radiation levels in the planet remain consistent, indicating that it is still producing fresh um, polonium particles. It is quite peculiar, and inadvertently we may have discovered a source of um, perpetual energy at high cost, of course. A very high cost, considering the atmospheric damage to this planet. We may have to neutralize it, but we would like to take it with us. We don't want to. We don't want it to remain on the planet. That is understandable. I shall, which are, if you can spare one of your il many illustrious shuttlecraft and pilot, where I can provide you with a rough estimate to find it. Well, I definitely appreciate that. In any case. You're free to stay on the remain on the Nighthawk as long as you like, and when the rest of the staff have finished their respective duties and we have an additional plan together, we'll call you back here for further instructions. I appreciate that, Captain. However, I would, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer to beam back down to the surface so that I could be with my people. Understandable. By all means, you have my permission to back and disembark. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Commander. I'll take him back to the transporter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I would like to, after that, um, as I say, I'm going to take one of our uh, cargo bays and try to, uh, we'll refit it to a, um, you know, like a, call an uh, area. Yeah. So, he, you know, I'm trying area. to get yeah. to, yeah, for the, uh, for the village people and all that kind of stuff. Of course. Uh, they, After um, all the... Because you've left the Shran down there, they are definitely going to want to do a mass disco party. Yes! Ah! There's that feed... Ah! Feedback's back. There it went. Okay. Alright. So I believe we were going to have a investigation on the holodeck with Vaid and Helsing. Okay. And you guys are shooting bug simulations for fun and science. Got got to practice hitting my targets. And science. Right. So, Lieutenant, you're saying that these things absorb energy? Well, that's what we're going to test out. <laughs> What what kind? Because the exoskeleton helps protect them. Okay, because I've got an idea that has been an almost fantasy of mine. Uh oh. <laughs> Please elaborate. But we'll we'll try the energy weapon first. Try the energy weapon first, and we'll we'll get, gather that data. All right. I'm already scared where this is going. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> okay, um, Miss Vaid, if you could please roll me control plus science, please. Because you are shooting the bug for science purposes. Yes. And studying the results. Uh, this is going okay. to be a difficulty of two. Uh, xenobiology because of science? Yep, I'll let that happen. And if, oh, Ms. No. if Mr. Helsing wants to help, that could be either control science or control security. All right, control security it is. Uh, small arms? Small arms will work. And that's one momentum. So, 
um, with you coaching her through it. Not only does Vaid us work on her marksmanship, uh, she's also able to run a spectrum analysis through the phaser on the creature. Um, you are uh, Vaid. You learn that the uh, creature is ex especially adept at dealing with the um, high frequency um, high f high frequency spectrum type of energy, such as ultraviolet radiation and alpha particles, and that's just including the stuff that the phaser uses. Um, you do see that it does have a limit with the amount of energy it can deal with before it suffers armor overload, for lack of a better term. So. Okay. Um, it seems it the exoskeleton is able to absorb some of the energy, but it will crack if there's enough energy put into it. So it's it's like it absorbs it like a sponge, but then in a, a sponge eventually overflows. Uh, dear. Um, let's run a quick simulation of another round. So that's with energy. What about with force? A kinetic weapon. Um, computer, um, generate an American 180 rimfire subgun suppressed. Oh my. And it's a um, 22 caliber um, automatic super high rate of fire suppressed submachine gun. Are you going to shoot that, sir? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, I'm sorry, you're... sort of a fantasy. <laughs> So you're going to have to put a picture of that particular weapon in chat. So, okay. The weapon... I'm, ironically enough, it's keyed up. <laughs> I'm just saying I've been working on something. I can see that already. So it replicates a... Uh, ah, it yeah, replicates Jean, the weapon. Repeat that. Well, well, repeat that whole thing. I want to hear you say it. Computer. <laughs> yeah. Computer, generate a... Uh, American 180 rimfire sub gun suppressed, and a w rimfire 180 degrees w sub weapon is now in your hand. And the picture I posted in chat's not the suppressed <laughs> version, but yeah. yeah. Okay, that thing looks scary as hell. Cool. Yep, you now have one of those in your hand. Now the thing is, it's only 22 caliber, but a 22 caliber according to my research, is a very quiet weapon and can be suppressed very easily. We don't want to make too much noise. I, well, some noise, loud, extremely loud sounds can uh, knock them out for a little bit. Knock them out? Or uh, confuse them, GM? I know it'll cause a bunch of them to run to it. Potentially, but it could, I guess those in the area will be knocked yeah. out for sure. Yeah, oh, if it's, okay. if, if something goes, if like a sonic pulse grenade or something goes off within close range, then yes, it will have a stun effect. It's even better than my little noisemakers I was thinking about <laughs> having engineering come up with. Thank you. And I let loose a, a burst with the subgun. All right, uh, roll me um, control plus security, please. No idea what to do for damage on it. I have no idea either. We'll just figure it out. I don't think projectile weapons are covered in... No. Nope. <laughs> Sadly, you only have small arms phasers. <laughs> uh, what a shame. Well, well, that's still a success. Um, let's see. I'm going to say that it does the same amount of damage as a phaser type 2 for now. It just doesn't have the charge ability. Okay. And it has the it has the deadly ability and actually probably the vicious ability. Uh, yes. I'll do vicious 
and that literally shreds the target. Oh, God. Jesus. Yeah. And you hardly hear anything. A little bit. Yeah, it sounds like someone's coughing, but... Yeah, just, just about. Fade had instinctively tried to cover her ear. <laughs> was surprised. Yeah, and the smile's hard to wipe off my face right now. Computer X. Thing is, they burn through ammo really fast. Based on the rate of fire. Yep. Okay, that's a possibility. And do you know the type of specs it would be for to make a sonic grenade, for lack of a better term, that would stun these? Um, do you have uh, small arms or explosives or something like that as a talent fade? Or not talent, uh, focus? No. <laughs> uh, might be out of your wheelhouse, but I happen to know one of the support characters has weapons as a uh, focus. Yeah, we might have to pull, pull them in, one of the engineers who, and scientists who are a little bit more specialized. But that's okay. Good. I think we got some good plans here. Only we had a bunch of Klingons with Batlas. Uh, if only. Or grannies with brooms. Well, I think we or, found our weapon possibility. Or ninja Romulans. Ninja. <laughs> that. I have yeah. nicknamed this little weapon the the broom. Just a heads up, Star Trek Picard is not canon in my universe until I say it is. <laughs> How okay. quickly is going to somebody do a write-up for the Romulan ninjas? Oh, not long at all. It's probably already out there somewhere. <laughs> probably. Okay. Okay. I'm very sad right now because I was just waiting to cheese you with handheld transporter enhancers. But, you know, rip. Rip. Rip indeed. Okay. So, you guys have weapons, you guys have a plan, and you guys have a chief engineer still on the planet, who's and, doing God knows what with them right now. <laughs> what do you guys uh, wish? Helsing, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Helsing to uh, Captain. That's a single. Uh, yes, sir. Um, Tim Vayard and I, we've come up with a, one very quiet weapon, and she's going to be working on make, seeing what we can do about making a sonic grenade that would possibly be loud enough to distract and stun these. Well, that's excellent, Commander. Inform me when permission. your preparations are complete. Roger. So, permission to have uh, engineering use the industrial replicators to make some of these uh, brooms. Absolutely. And the ammo. Roger. All right. So. Will we be able to carry the ammo? That's what support characters are for. <laughs> Roger. They're, they're drawn magazines. You'll be able to carry a couple of them, no problem. But... If we did go down, we'd only take a couple of these and we'd have phasers for backup. Fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> so. Sounds to me like you're ready to execute. Does anyone have anything they'd like to do before we kick things off? Any scenes they'd like to do? Nah, don't think so. Okay. So we are going to cut to the bridge where everybody is awaiting the captain's orders. Well, I'll go ahead and comms the planet below and try to contact Commander Tashran and ask him if the colony is as ready as ever. Uh to proceed with mass transport. 
the response you're getting back is uh, fairly staticky, static filled, dropping every second word, sort of like when Discord goes through one of its fits. And Captain, we are experienced. Captain, we're as ready to go down here as we can. We're just rounding up the last of the survivors. You wouldn't believe it down here, Captain. They've never even heard of a disco ball. Yeah, I I can't believe it. I I certainly can't. <laughs> Absolutely, I can't. It's going to be an exciting cultural uh, reintegration process, sir. I will I will teach them the disco. I will teach them how to boogie down, and I will teach them Andorian metal. Well, it seems like you just volunteered as a uh, reintegration slash cultural Specialist. ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have your work cut out for you when you return aboard. In any case, it seems like we've got our nuts and bolts together. So places, people. Okay. Uh, so if someone wants to begin the flight of the Nighthawk into the atmosphere, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, control plus con. Ship can assist with engines plus con. And I'm going to throw some threat into this to increase the threat range 18 to 20. Well, definitely seems like a job for Mr. Davis, so I'll go ahead and grab him and take us down. Okay. Are we still at five momentum here? Uh, this is we scene are. change, so... Oh, scene change. Yeah, yeah. Scene change, yeah. down to four. <clears throat> okay. So I'll go ahead and make a control plus con check. Mm-hmm. I'll, uh... I'll buy a dice with one momentum. Ooh, cool. And who's got the ship? I'll bring her up. And what was the ship, sir? Uh, engines con. Okay, so that is uh, three successes, so one momentum. <clears throat> it is a slightly bumpy ride. Um, the larger the ship, the greater um, it's affected by several of the larger currents wafting through the atmosphere. Jefferson is able to navigate with deft skill. Uh, he has learned a lot from the um, now departed Urken and he is eager to show off what he can do. The uh, ship is now an approach vector for the sh for the first wave of transports. <clears throat> so uh, you can go through the transport enhancers, or you can try without. Uh, you can get more on board without the. If if you try to bypass the transporter enhancers, you can get more in one go, but less reliably. I would prefer the answer. Take more time, but I would rather be safer. Do the First, enhancers still have the chance to be burned out like we were running yes. before? That is, yeah. that is accurate. So they're either... What do you wish to do? Oh, well, we're going to go through the enhancers until they give out on us, I suppose, or it's Fair enough. it becomes unreliable. Okay. Um, then you can... So have Miss Oz... I believe it's Zell. Uh, engineering. Or, yeah, Miss, Miss uh, Zell, have her roll me some control plus engineering, please. The ship will assist with sensors engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty of... Let's see. Radiation does that. Does that, does that. This is still going to be a difficulty of three. 
Anybody have Zell? I got Zell up right now. Oh, go for it then. And sensors engineering for the ship. Yes, please. Okay, so Zell has one. Ship needs to roll a critical. Oh, nope, ship just... Ah, sorry, I'm not scrolling down there. <clears throat> hmm. I'm going to let that succeed with threat. Uh, I'll take the I'll take the threat for that. Uh, the first group of ten, uh, nope, sorry, of six have arrived on board. Uh, medical teams are already standing by to escort them off the platform to begin the next set. The next set um, is ready to be beam aboard. And if you could just re-roll those rolls again, please. Alrighty. Hopefully we'll roll better. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's a good roll. So that is oh, yeah. one more one momentum on top of everything. <clears throat> um, this time it is um, Avon Zell reports now all the chill... Um, many of the young children have been brought on board. Uh, ten of them. They were small enough to that they could fit in the um, transporter beams. And you now have most of the younglings are now on board and being shepherded away into Cargo Bay, th uh, cargo bay 2. Anakin, no. Uh, All right. Nope. Um, so. so, there is... I'm going to use the... I sorry, I just I was going for the next round and I used the momentum. Okay, Roger, I'll take it off. Uh, okay, so you do that and ship assists. Uh, still one more success. Um, and another th another six adults show up, and at this point, Commander Thashran is reporting that the whatever lattice work the crystal is made of is beginning to destabilize with all the. Uh, transporter effects going on in its near vicinity. Uh, he's concerned that the crystal is going to break apart, and if we do, and because the crystal is where all the life support systems Oops. are running through, Sorry. not entirely sure that the that it will survive. Uh, ah, he is not entirely certain that the crystal is going to survive, and requests that we either hurry up, Captain, or get some shuttles down here for some manual evacuation. Well, I have the shuttles on standby, definitely. Uh, we'll go ahead and put them... We'll, well. we'll have them leave the ship and at least have them hover over the, the, the Veritas. Okay. So it is... It's low enough that they don't have to deal with the heavy winds of the atmosphere, but... It's still not the e smoothest ride for them. Okay, if you guys can roll again. Uh, looks like Avon already has. So that is one more momentum. That is a zero. And that's not a fail. Shame. Okay. Uh, six more are on board. I believe that has brought us up to about 30. So you're one third of the way there. <clears throat> Okay. It's at this point that uh, Thashran says, that did it, Captain. Um, life support is failing within the colony. It's not going to be too long before the bugs start finding their way in if we can't get these get us out of here. Well, Commander Helsing, is there any... If we were to launch a uh, directed phaser elsewhere on the surface or a very low-yield torpedo... Would that cause enough of a disturbance to get them away from uh, the, their position? The only way to know for sure is to try, sir. Can you target the ship? Is isn't it really it? close to the entrance? It's literally on it's top of the under. Entrance. But yeah, I was gonna say, can you target a part of the ship since that's where their hive is at? And basically, I mean, like a low yield uh, 
phaser blast to the ship to get their attention elsewhere is what I'm suggesting. Have you... Hmm. If we had something that would... Uh, it would take too long to reconfigure anything else. We can do a, a torpedo low yield or even phasers on a wide spread just outside the ship to try to stir something up. I just think a torpedo would be too d dangerous to like, if they're already having stability problems, I just think that yeah. impact would shake things up too much. All right, then let's do a series of minimum power directed phaser bursts, each one subsequently leading further away from the, uh, the position. breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Roger idea. that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is going to be a control security. Uh, ship can assist with weapon security. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Um, and I'm and going use... to spend some threat to increase uh, threat range 18 to 20. Okay, I'm going to use a momentum thing for a die. Okay. And assume the ship can assist. Yep, ship assists with weapon security. Okay. Somebody have the ship? Someone roll ship. But I can get it. Okay, I have it up. Come on. Oh, okay. Um, weapon. I say I'm moving Zell. Okay. And that's two momentum for you guys. Cool. You're back to max. So, <clears throat> with pinpoint accuracy and somehow avoiding all the structural weak points on what is pretty much the Starfleet equivalent of Swiss cheese at this point in time, uh, Mr. Helsing, you are able to uh, trace a line of uh, phaser fire in a direction that is away from the main entrance to the base, and therefore creating the... Um, are therefore creating a bit of a distraction. And I believe you're maxed out at six momentum, not seven. Roger. It's okay, I'm going to use one right now. <laughs> oh, what are you using right for? Ah, uh, because I'm going to continue trying to beam up the rest of the people. Ah. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, with the... Um... <clears throat> so, uh, do another Zell roll, please. So, Zell with that... Uh, control engineering ship with sensors engineering. There's that, and there's that. Okay, that is the three momentum needed. At which there is a bit of a sh uh, over the active comm link between uh, the Shrani's. Captain, we just lost one of the enhancers. That's it for this. We've still got. He does a quick head count. Looks like we got about 46 left, sir. Very well. Continue to keep me apprised. Stay on your toes. Um, quick question, Jim. Mm -hmm. How many people? How many people can we fit into the the shuttles if we had to land them all down at one time? Uh, let me do a quick check of which shuttles you have, and then I can tell you. So the Phantom was still pretty beat up. Right. Phantom is pretty the... much useless. You have the Type XX. You have a Type Nine Two. I think you have two of those. Two 9-2s, a Type XX, and a Spectre. Uh, Spectre is not much for passenger capacity. You can only cram probably two or three into there. Uh, between the XX and the two 9s, um, assuming comfort is not a high priority, or seatbelts for that matter, um, I would assume you could probably cram about... Let's see. Eight into each shuttle, so 16, and then... Probably s s twice that into that. That would be about 25 into the shuttles. And we'd probably have to have some nope, security on board just to uh, keep any bugs away. Yeah, I'm sorry, thir uh, 35. Yeah. 35 could be stored on the total shuttles. So it would be a couple runs, but you could do it. We could have the uh, Spectre lay down a 
a pattern if we had any bugs start getting too close. Mm -hmm. If only Urkin were here. Yeah, I know. He liked collateral damage. But he is one with the prophets now. Yes, yes he is. How'd you like to do it? All right. I still think she should be continuing to try to do small uh, groups without okay. the enhancers. Okay. Uh, that bumps it to difficulty four. Uh, she still has her determination she could use for one more load. She does. Yeah. And we still got, I mean, we're still doing really good on the momentum. So that's a giant plus. Well, we got to get a damn so we can get them on, the ones on the shuttles. Okay, that's two successes from Miss Zell. Uh, did that include the determination? No, that okay. just straight up. Uh, that would not be a that would be a failure in this instance. The, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, the uh, Zell, you get nothing but radiation, which the computer immediately alerts you to and cancels the transport. And yes. <laughs> we've got the shuttles going in. Okay. Uh, so if you I, said, I, I can do one more with her with determination, um, because you got the uh, people are counting on me. I, I'd say hold her for the last emergency if we gotta get the Shan out and everything. <laughs> That's what I was kind of thinking too. Is like we'll save our one crew. Okay, so we're going to do a shuttle evacuation? Yeah. Okay. Um, each shuttle will have... Um, the, the smaller ones will have one security guy with a, a broom, and the larger one will have uh, two security with uh, a broom each. Okay. We are going to cut to the shuttle bay, where two... Type 9-2 shuttles are going to fly in. <clears throat> and there are going to be a pair of security officers with all the fun stuff. So I know because you want to, because you want to, uh, you just want to see them in action. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, uh, Deny you the chance to shoot some bugs with a machine gun. Oh, if they, if no bugs show up because Helsing led them all away, it's it's fine. I mean, Helsing led led several away, but there will still be a few bugs because you know drama. In that tricorder, still there beeping maybe. <laughs> I think by now the uh, corrosion has gotten to it, okay. and it's no longer beeping. Maybe making a sad wail. <laughs> I do appreciate you bringing that up, though. I like that. <laughs> oh no, that's not Bashir. We're looking at the other Endorian, which is the Shran. The Shran and the other individuals. I am back to science. Mr. Jacobs and Cable. They're all here, along with several other civilians. And of course, we can't have a. A rescue scene with at least a bit of a threat so there are a few bugs still milling around attracted by the um, roar of the end of the shuttlecraft engines shuttlecraft rear doors open up and good guys get to go first so uh, how I'm going to run ammo is that you guys get four shots with your weapon uh, before you have to take a standard action to reload. Um, however, um, you uh, you are able to apply the area effect 
but it will eat up two of your uh, rounds, so to speak. Hopefully that makes sense. It did. Good show. Uh, so if uh, Lisa or Yas wish to make some sort of attack. Um, I'll take Lisa if somebody wants to take Yas. Sure. <clears throat> Got it. All right, and we'll do... What? Is it uh, automatically it has the area effect if I use two? Yes, if you use two, it will automatically have area. All right, she's uh, going to use two ammo for the area. Okay. And she will use a momentum as well. Sadly, no broom focus. Well, she does. Ha you do have an activation. Although she doesn't need it, because that's one extra momentum. And roll me some challenge dice, please. Okay, she was... We said it's the same as a phaser two? I believe, yeah, that's what I said. So that's a... Was that a three damage? Mm-hmm. So she's a seven. Okay, that is uh, five total and three effects. And I'll take a momentum. Well, I earned a momentum. Mm -hmm. So then I'll reroll the zeros. Burn one more to reroll the zeros. Okay. Okay, that is uh, a grand total of six effects and eight damage. So you see all these bugs right in front of you? Yeah, they are now chunky insect salsa. So yes, it's controlled fire. Controlled fire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, thankfully, bad guys get to go now. <clears throat> These two are going to charge. Actually, that's where most of the noise is coming from, so they're all going to charge the shuttle. And Yas, in his bio suit, is going to have to fend off three of them, I think. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And because I closed my bugs sheet, here we go. Okay, so that's that. Can I? I don't think I can. Okay, so that's the first attack. This is what happens when you stand too close to windows. Yes. Carrying security. I don't have a automatically re-roll button. I have to do figure out how to do that. Roll that again, and finally for the third attack. Bugs aren't doing all that well. I mean, Yas could fend them off. Wow, that's... Okay, so roll me uh, three opposed daring security tests, please. Yeah? Yes? <clears throat> and Yas doesn't have hand-to-hand. -hand. Well, you can give him hand-to-hand -hand because you just activated him. Mm-hmm. Or give him a... Uh, yeah. So hand-to-hand? -hand? Yeah, he's been working out with Helsing. Yes, okay. yes he has. <laughs> I'll take care of it, you just roll. Okay, so that's one yes. And two more, please. Oh. Oh, okay. Bad. Yeah. You successfully fended off the first bug. How about the second bug? I probably should have done this. I realize now I've done this poorly, and I'm sorry, but... All right. Yeah, I basically ran all of them in the same initiative, which was not what I wanted meant to do. Sorry. Oh, well. And the third? Oh. Yeah. I forgot there was three. 
There were three. I'm sorry. GM did silly. I got eager with a bug swarm. No! Ah, okay. Dang it. got through. Okay, so do me... Uh, so roll me two sets of five challenge dice, please. Because you successfully repelled two of them. That's there's one. Mine. And there's the other. Okay. And I will roll to see how the third one does. <clears throat> Which is... Nope. They only roll three challenge dice. And that's three damage to uh, Yas. And since one rolled a vicious, your suit gets punctured. I mean, it's not the worst thing that could happen. So, yeah. So, because I ran all my guys at once, because I am bad GM. Uh, Yas, would you care to fight back? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, God. And don't forget, you got momentum. Yes, you have lots. Uh, charge, uh, or uh, you got does, does you have, have the broom. broom. Yeah, you okay. have the so you could apply to an area effect for basically free. Yes. No, it costs two ammo. You have two ammo left. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Got to welcome the welcoming party. Yes. Roll out the red carpet. And it is... Uh, what um, do I roll again for that? So that's three plus your security challenge dice, so that would be seven challenge dice. Oh. Oh, she hasn't hit yet. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, control security, please. Difficulty two. And you to have three dice with one momentum. Oh, I didn't roll the momentum. Okay. One more then. Just to see how yes. well... Oh, of course it's ah! a crit. So, two more momentum right back. Good lord, you guys are rolling well. Okay. And we're back to four. We are. Uh, so, if you could please roll me seven challenge dice, please. That is seven damage, three effects. So, that's the lot of them. <laughs> this is how we say hello. <laughs> and that was combat. As you uh, begin to ferry the other... Uh, individuals, many of whom are braving the radiation without ac accurate protection uh, into the back. Uh, Dean Jacobs looks at um, you security officers and says, so can are these Starfleet issue? Can I have me one? Starfleet replicated issue? And Se no. Sem semantics. So, no? Damn. Oh well. So between the two Not shuttles, yet at least. Uh, between the two shuttles and the uh, da, and the uh, Type XX shuttle, you are able to get everyone on board, and are able to pull away just as about another ten or so bugs scramble into the shuttle bay. Um, as you're all in the shuttle, um, the Shran pipes up. Okay, somebody here hasn't showered. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> At which point someone says, that would be pretty much everyone. So it is cramped, it is crowded, but it is, but you are all thankfully airborne and away from the Veritas. <clears throat> and meanwhile, I'm going to say that Miss Am. Uh, Nah, Miss uh, Jackson, the half Vulcan shuttle pilot, has taken the Spectre to go and find the um, and uh, find the power module. And it's not it's not too distant away. It's probably about uh, 200 kilometers or so. 
uh, due west of the habitation, let's say. Um, what does Miss Jackson wish to do with it? That's not the right set piece. Oh, who's playing Miss Jackson? I'm sorry, I am, and I didn't hear any of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. It happens. I was nodding off myself. Um. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Um, not. Yep. A climactic uh, shuttle evacuation scene, and people fall asleep. It happens when you're playing late games on the East Coast. Um. Where are we? Yes. Right. So, Miss Jackson, you are tracking down the uh, engine part. The experimental generator. Uh, it's roughly 200 um, kilometers due west of the uh, Veritas wreck, and uh, you find it nest or you find it inside a small crater, and it is still active. And your the ship is unable to get too close to it without the radiation sensors going off. What do you wish to do with it? Well, I'd like to come to the Nighthawk and sure. see if there's any uh, modifications I could do to actually neutralize this, uh, the core. Um, Kaval, who is probably halfway on board, or jammed inside one of the shuttles at the moment, advises you that once he reaches a place where he can actually access a computer, uh, he can transfer the data to you and hope that you can do something. In any case, uh, I'd like to see if I could uh, at least attempt to get a tractor beam on it without it blowing up. Okay. Um, and if, as long as I maintain a safe enough distance away from it. Yeah. So uh, roll me a control plus security. Uh, the ship, uh, the uh, specter can assist with um, yeah, with weapon security. This is going to be a difficulty of three test because the radiation is just nasty and you got zero successes. So the radiation is disrupting the tractor beam's um, integrity as it approaches as it even approaches it. Uh, your shuttle is not going to have much success with, with grabbing it and bringing it, bringing it back. All right, then it may be something that we'll need to, the Nighthawk to do after the evacuation is okay. complete. In any case, I'll just continue to monitor the area. Very well. Uh, Nighthawk Shuttle Bay is has never seen this much activity. Um, 40 people getting off the shuttle are immediately met with Dr. Coox and the medical team and are brought to sick bay for triage, uh, radiation sickness or depoisoning and general well-being checks. Uh, Captain, you are you receive reports from the shuttle bay that the last of the shuttles are aboard. And there are no further life signs on the planet. Except for insects. Yeah, but <laughs> they don't count. Bugs aren't people. Oh, we don't have a nuke anymore, unfortunately, so... <laughs> no, no you don't. I'm sorry, I'm never going to live it down. I mean, you did use it against Borg, so... True. Yeah. Well, if everybody that is a is... question. Was there any sign or any sign of activity? No, not on this planet. Okay. I didn't know if they uh, just got passed by or. <clears throat> so I kind of I've been thinking a lot about that about going back to our original mission and tracking down anti pork stuff. It's probably something in the back of my head. Probably a half decent <laughs> idea, but. GM keeps throwing these things at you. How can you... Right. Yeah. <laughs> Say lovey. Okay. Well, now that uh, everybody else is on back on board again, I'll 
come over to Lieutenant Vade at the science station to see. And well, I'm sorry, not Lieutenant Vade. Uh, he's on board now. Let's see if you. Uh, I'm, for, I'm forgetting his name again. I'm terrible at this. Cable. For sure, Cable. <laughs> no. Thank you. The, the yeah, we left the fan on the planet. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh no! Are we forgetting something? Are we forgetting something? Something important? Guys. No. Guys. 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 Okay. I'll come to Cave All and see if I could, uh, if I'll be able to get to a, the nearest uh, computer terminal mm-hmm. and see if he can trans- transmit this information to Miss Jackson. Yeah. Uh, he has a. Uh, I forget the actual term that they used, but it's one of those old uh, cartridges that they used in the movies that had data on it. So similar to a USB stick, has all the uh, ice linear chips. Thank you. That's the term. Might actually be technology before ice linear, but close enough. <clears throat> it's a requires an adapter to use, and the binars look at that and say, "Oh, we've learned about that in history class." But on it contains all the specs of a uh, the polonium or the polonium injector assembly which basically takes um, matter from around itself um, uses a sort of a replicate replicator style technology to break it down and rebuild it into uh, barium 210 uh, and then bombards it with, I think the terms are with positrons, to force it into a polonium-209 state, then before the polonium-209 can fully um, degenerate, uh, the the decaying particle is injected into the warp core, where hypothetically unlimited power could be achieved for a split second. Quite a controversial, uh, or quite an unsafe uh, piece of kit, really. Requires so many bloody safeguards. Even um, the Shran is thinking about not touching this with a ten-foot pole. But, of course, he probably will, because it's the Shran. But, I was going to say, I thought he'd be all over that yeah. guy. <laughs> he probably will be, actually. I'm telling an NPC, or a player character, how to think, and that's a bad thing. We'll see what the Shran does with it, if you're able to do it. So, easiest way would be to somehow uh, trigger a manual shutdown of the replication phase. It should stop taking in new matter and replicating it into the baryon. Or, or not baryon, the beryllium. What is it? One of those B chemicals. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a job for uh, Lieutenant Vid. Let's see if we could uh, create some sort of scattering field that the shuttle could then replicate. Okay. Uh, Miss Vid, do you by chance have part... Uh, this is going to be a control science. And if you have something along the lines of deflector dish or particle physics or something like that... Deflector operations. Deflector operations. That'd probably do the trick. This is going to be a difficulty of... I'm going to spend my last threat because I don't have any left now. Because you guys are just too good. I know. Um, I'm (laughs) going to increase the difficulty to four. Uh, Ship Uh, can assist with um, structure plus science or structure plus engineering. Okay, can you repeat what I have to roll again? Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Roll control science, please. And the ship can assist with sensors science. Nope, sorry. Ship assists with structure science. And this will be a difficulty four. Should I go ahead and blow momentum? Use go for momentum. it. Oh, please. Yes. Have you used your determination yet? No. That's an option, too. Or, wait, I used it. No, I did in the first round. Oh, you already have part. used it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if, you use it. If you've, yeah, because we're two-parting this and you wanted to keep the momentum from last session, that means you don't refresh your determinations. So, 
or I used it in the mirror verse one. Oh no! But, uh, okay. If you've used it, oh no, no, you would have it back after that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I don't think any of my values work. Uh, what values do you have? Uh, something out there is calling. Oh, let's see what's out there. Maybe. Um, mm. don't trust the Kardashians. <laughs> I used to hang with <laughs> the background. <laughs> uh, that's not. Yeah, neither of those. None of those are very are good matches in this case. I'm afraid. Oh well. Uh oh gosh, that roll now. Now it's all on me. It's all on um, you. Um. Okay, how does the momentum work again? So it's... Uh, you spend one, one momentum and... for the third dice, and then two more momentum for a third... for a fourth dice. And okay, then... so that would be three momentum, and yeah. we only have four, so mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and do that. You could oh, buy yeah. the rest with... and you could buy a fifth with the final momentum and two threat, which will give me more threat to play with, which I'm okay with. What do y'all think? Well... The Nighthawk got you a complication. So no. <laughs> no, yes. To get okay. rid of the complication, we'd have to use two momentum. Yeah. And we oh, wouldn't so. have that left. So, you're going to go go for uh, four dice and burn three momentum, and hopefully we'll get one back. That's what I would think, yeah. I'd say use, use the three, take four dice. And yes. there you go. Uh, five degrees of success, so you get one momentum. Congratulations. Nice roll. Perfect. And then use that other momentum to burn off the complication, or is zero? Um, yeah, that would give you the two momentum, so you could cancel yep. the... Because that would leave us with two. We'd get rid of the thing and happy ending. Shame. Sorry. Oh well. Okay. That is fine. Can't get a better roll than that though. So. Nope. <laughs> uh, from... Got it. In... <laughs> the DM had, had zero threat. Yep. GM ran out of threat at the end. Yeah. And, yeah. That, just, and, and that roll was just too perfect because that I mean yeah that left exactly with two to buy off that end and. Mm -hmm. Yep. It all well, evened out. So uh, w with the Nighthawk. Uh, you reconfigure the deflector dish to stable, to deploy a scattering field, which is enough to allow the shuttle to get close enough to disable the, um, the the replication system. And the replication system, once that's disabled, the rest of the drive just or the rest of the injector assembly just sort of crashes, like a computer crashing because of a system error. <clears throat> or actually an engine crashing because it doesn't have any gas is a better thing. And once that's done, it's the the thing is still glowing radi is still glowing harder than Chernor Chernobyl on uh, day on D Day, but it is at least salvageable. Well, let's uh, actually get a tractor on it, but I don't want it on board the ship. Let's uh, keep it on the specter. Or let's keep it tracked on the specter. <coughs> we go into warp. Let's just extend the warp bubble around the shuttle and okay. the core itself. I want to just keep it on the outside. Okay. I got a quick question. Hmm. I want to ask Ensign Toggy if a hive or a garden could possibly cure the radiation. Hmm. Uh, Togi stops and contemplates for a few seconds. It is... Uh, this garden has not encountered this type of uh, energy before. It would have to experiment, I believe. Uh, this garden believes the term is to experiment? Of course. Make that your top priority. If we can contact your people here this planet and possibly salvage this equipment with a garden. Of course. 
Uh, Thanks, buddy. <laughs> request permission to transport to the shuttlecraft. Of course. Very well. And with that, Togi beams to the shuttle, and that is where the... So you guys currently have about 90 people on board. They're very grateful. Um, they're currently going through the replicator rations like nothing. Did anybody actually want to stay, or they were they all pretty united on getting the heck out? Many of the young children were interested in staying just because this was their home, and you know how children are when it comes to change being forced change. upon them. Sure. But most of the um, adults were second geners, who, of course, knew what or knew what a crummy place this was because that's what their parents told them it was. <laughs> um, you know, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut off your no, kind of thought. Nope, go ahead. All right, I was actually thinking, um, instead, I'd actually like to, instead of like taking this core with us the entire way, I'd actually like to ask either the Black Shield or the Naginata to rendezvous with us, and they'll take the Millennium Core to Station Zero. That seems oh. like a much better idea. That does sound like one, and that sounds like something that the Naginata would be happy to assist with. Nice. Okay, so uh, we'll just mark the Naginata as unavailable for the moment, should you need their assistance in the future. <clears throat> so, uh, that is the end of the plot. So, do you guys have any closing scenes you'd like to do? Any role-playing inter-character stuff? Been on a planet full of bugs. That's probably raised some nightmares. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I would like to do something with uh, Thrasham, but I'll wait till he comes on next time. Sure, we can do that early. Yeah, on. that's after twelve, and I need to go to bed. So Fair I enough. appreciate it, but I'm going. <laughs> all right, guys. Then we'll call it here. Thanks all for playing. Thanks all for listening, and we will be back in two weeks on March the twelfth. So I uh, have. Have yourselves all a great night. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.